Christ is risen. Alleluia. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's reading, the theme verse for the year, is from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. This is the word of the Lord.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. In book four of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, the archangel Gabriel, as a character, looks on a sleeping Adam and Eve, and he prays over them, and he says this, Sleep on, O blessed pair, and O yet happiest, if ye seek no happier state, and know to know no more. Know to know no more. By playing with the two forms of a word, to know, K-N-O-W, to understand something, and not at all, N-O, the poet, a blind poet no less, asserts a central warning of this classic text. Our acquisition of and our handling of knowledge can leave us vulnerable, perhaps even miserable in this life. Treating knowledge like something that's risky or dangerous may sound strange in the context at the end of a semester at here at a university, but our theme verse for this academic year also clearly warns us of the pitfalls that knowledge and its pursuit can present. When Solomon says, do not lean on your own understanding, he lays a foundation that Milton picks up and builds on and he counsels us about the perils that lurk within our efforts to know things, to know more things. In our lives as sinners, we live out a tragedy that demonstrates the awful consequences of our desire to know more. And we certainly come by that impulse naturally through our heredity. Those ancient parents, Adam and Eve, doubted God's goodness, they instead pursued a path to idolatrous knowledge that they found by eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And unfortunately, that path delivered not only knowledge, but also a destination of eternal destruction and damnation to them and to us. And now we live out that death sentence each day in our lives. We also live out that desire to know more in our lives every day. We want to know and touch those unholy things that will bring us harm. We're drawn to things that aren't chaste or decent. We indulge in gossip that destroys our neighbor's reputation. We feed our own egos. We arrogantly work sometimes to undermine others. We can covet what others possess and we strive to accumulate more and more and achieve more and more than anyone else around us. We seem to think sometimes that the one who dies knowing the most might be the real winner. Conversely, we also come to know that when we know too much, the result is that we want to cry out, no more, as in N-O, no more. We've seen too much violence in the neighborhoods of Milwaukee. We've seen too much violence in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. We've lived in families where those who are close to us are struggling with addictions or trauma or abuse. Perhaps we've suffered at the hands of those in the church who would rather do us harm than extend the love of Christ to us. We've watched loved ones suffer terribly because of disease. And what's our response? We're tempted simply to look away from our broken lives. It's much easier than admitting that we know it's true that we live in a miserable condition. In the gospel for this past Sunday, our Lord Jesus reminds us that our lives consist of so much more than what our own limited understanding or knowledge reveals to us. Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. Jesus, the good shepherd, knows his own 
and we, his dearly beloved sheep, know him. He establishes this intimate relationship with us by laying down his life for us through his death on the cross and rising from the prison of death on that third day. In this way, our Lord Jesus wants us to not only know him, but to trust him with all of our hearts, not only as our shepherd, but also as our savior from sin and death and all that wants to separate us from him for eternity. And of course, Jesus not only knows us, but he is the one who makes it possible for us to know him, to listen to his voice. We are here today because his spirit called us through the gospel, washed us through the waters of holy baptism, brought us into his kingdom, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctified us to live vocations that glorify him and serve our neighbors in need. He continually tells us through his servants that our sins are forgiven. He tenderly invites us to his altar where he feeds us the medicine of immortality, his body and blood and soul and divinity, all so that we can know that in Christ, the devil, the world and our sinful flesh and all the lies that they tell us will not have the last word. The end of a semester always stirs up a variety of emotions for me. The rhythm and cycle of the academic year with commencement and the transition to summer, it all leads us to pause and reflect on the work of the past days and weeks and months and years. Makes me wonder if the blind poet is right. Have we learned enough? Have we learned the right things or the wrong things? Have we accomplished enough? Have we been good enough? And if we lean on our own understanding to answer those questions, we come to fear knowledge and the act of knowing because the answer is always a resounding no, N-O. In, in and of ourselves, we are simply never enough. But that no is not our Lord's final declaration for us because Jesus has laid down his life for us and taken it up again. He has given us every possible reason to trust in him with our whole hearts. In this Easter season, he assures us that he has destroyed death's claim over us. His resurrection confirms that he has taken the tangled mess we have made of our lives and instead made our paths straight. Living on that straight path means that the good shepherd pulls us close to himself. He holds us firmly in his grasp, and through the merciful voice of the gospel, he silences our questions, our fears, and our doubts, with the assurance that in him and in his saving work, God the Father fulfills all of his promises to us. Today and every day, we have the blessed comfort that in Christ, every no is now an emphatic yes. And to that end, we discover that Jesus is not only making our paths straight. We know with certainty that he is carrying us all the way to our eternal home. In the name of Jesus, amen. We'll now sing the hymn.
We stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day to serve you and worship you. Please bless us and be with us in the many tasks of this day and give us strength and energy and health for all the things that we are called to do. Today we include special peti petitions for Lori Strawman, for her family, as her godmother has passed away. Gracious Father, for this family and for all who mourn, we pray peace in your love and presence. Grant them comfort in their time of loss and the promise of eternal life for their loved one and for all who trust in Jesus as Savior. We also pray for those in need of healing. Donna No from Accounts Payable who is hospitalized and Laurie Strawman's husband who has broken his hip and will undergo surgery. Heavenly Father, for these your servants and all who look to you for healing, we pray for wisdom and skill for the doctors and all who attend them for healing according to your gracious will, and for strength and comfort in your love and presence during this time of need. We pray finally, dear Father, and thanksgiving for the blessings of this semester. We thank you that you have guided us along your path. Give us strength and diligence through the final exams to finish well to your glory. Hear these and all prayers on our hearts and in our minds as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.